Barbecue Central Radio Show will air live at 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. The Barbecue Central Radio Show will air live at 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. The Barbecue Central Radio Show will air live at This 9 is p.m. Maddie Rempe from Cleveland, Ohio. And you're listening to Barbecue Central. This is Maddie Rempe from Cleveland, Ohio. And you're listening to Barbecue Central. So to get that perfect barbecue, you use wood. Are you sure it's safe? Whatever. We put the lighter fluid on, strike your match, and... Should we call the fire department? That might be a good idea. Good evening and welcome to the really big barbecue central show. Here we go. This is the show that talks about all things important in the world of barbecue and grilling. We're broadcasting live and direct from the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame city of Cleveland, Ohio. It is the barbecue capital of the North Coast. I'm your program host, Greg Rempe. Happy to have you aboard here on your Tuesday. We have a fully locked and loaded jam-packed show. Didn't know if we were actually going to get there. But with the help of Embedded Texas correspondent Doug Scheiding, we are able to pull it off. And uh, I'll tell you what's going on here in just a minute. If you want to get in touch with the show, I'm welcoming your calls and emails the entirety of 120 minutes and this is how you can get in touch with me you can get in touch with the show by calling 216-220-0966 email greg at the bbq central show.com on the twitter and instagram at bbq central show anything else you want to find out about the show can be found at the main website and here's what's happening in case you can get the newsletter it was out a little delayed this evening but it did go out, so if you didn't get it, here's what's happening. Coming up in about 12 minutes from now, it is the fourth Tuesday of the month. Believe it or not, folks, in a week's time, we will be into April. Uh-oh. I'm not kidding. Now, if it was April 1st and I told you, I might be throwing some shenanigans your way, but I'm not. Next Tuesday, we will be into April. First quarter of the year is done. Where is it gone? But the fourth Tuesday of the month regular guest is here to talk. That, of course, the keeper of the flame over at AmazingRibs.com, Max Good. Always fun chatting with Max. On the docket this evening, a little bit of a recap of Meathead in Paradise, which he was a part of. We got some high-level stuff from Meathead uh, two weeks ago. But we'll get a little bit more of an in-depth look from Max Good, who was there. Again, Keeper of the Flame. Also, a couple grills to talk about. And we'll play a little catch-up on what I thought of HPB Expo in Atlanta a couple weeks ago and what he thought of it. He's also got a couple grills to talk about as well. And then at 9.35, first-timer to the show, competitive barbecue cook out of Texas, the pitmaster of Diablo's Cookers, Simon Flores, will be joining us. Lots of talk to Simon about, uh, not the least of which you would remember, it's probably been three, four weeks ago now, I'd had uh, embedded Texas correspondent Doug Scheiding on from Row Cookers, and we were talking about how the Houston Livestock and Rodeo had made kind of a blunder when it came to mentioning who the overall winners were in the Dutch oven dessert category. Simon was a part of that. Doug was actually a part of that as well, although he wasn't called originally because I believe he was like in 30th place overall, him and his wife. And then after they realized there had been error in the judging scores, they were improved to ninth place, the top 10 uh, or better overall. And uh, Simon was originally second, moved up to actually win. So we'll talk to him 
Of course, I really want to do an interview with those guys that were third place and then they dropped to like uh, 57th place. That's the interview I want. After we talk to Simon, Doug, make that happen. That won't be uncomfortable at all. It'll be great. So looking forward to meeting and talking barbecue with Simon Flores at 935, and then we'll move on to the second hour. At 1014, a regular contributor on this show. He is a barbecue pit master, competitive barbecue pit master. He does give classes. He owns Whiskey Bent Barbecue Supply down there in the southeast portion of the country. In, uh, the uh, What is it called? The Interal Im- Imperial Polk County, I believe. That's what it is, right? Imperial Polk County. But he's also Traeger's master marketer presidente. Chad Ward will be joining us here on the show. Big stuff coming from Chad Ward. Am I? Yeah, I'm connected, right? Is anybody getting me on Outdoor Cooking Channel? Everybody sees me, right? Froze up here, gone for me too. Uh Uh-oh. That's weird. I don't know. I'm, I'm showing us connected here, gang. Refresh, please. Please refresh. Now I got to jump over to the uh, message board here and make sure I'm connected. Well, maybe I'm not. Let's do this. I'm going to disconnect from custom. I refreshed and that didn't help. Boom. Of course not. And we'll try again, but I will not try again next time. If uh, if you if this freezes up next time, kick it over to a Twitch or kick it over to Facebook to get the stream. Thank you, Alex, for telling me that Facebook is working. So Chad Ward of Whiskey Bend Barbecue in the Pit will be on the show at ten fourteen. A uh, former Whiskey Bent Barbecue in the Pit uh, radio host, <laughs> former host. I believe that show's off the air now. And then helping me close out the show, also a first-timer to the show, so half the guests, first-timers, the other half of the guests are seasoned veterans when it comes to the Barbecue Central show. Innovative product, one that I saw at HPB Expo because they were actually the exhibit across from the Pit Barrel Cooker where I was kind of headquartered. For that particular event. I don't want to give. I don't want to blow the entire load. Right off the bat. But let's just say this. If you've ever decided. That your gas grill could use some improving. Especially when it comes to propane. To some degree. You might want to stay tuned for the 1035 segment. Because I'll be talking with Corey Sevilla. From Knob Where You Need It. Very much looking forward to catching up with Corey and see what's happening. See how that show did him. The good or the bad or the ugly. Maybe indifferent. Who knows? All right. uh, Let me tell you right now that the show is live right now. Uh, Audio, of course, on TuneIn or my website. You can get the live video feeds on my Facebook page over at OutdoorCookingChannel.com, which appears like it might be having some kind of an issue, but maybe it's reconnected. Or you can go to twitch.tv. Any way you want to serve it up, I'm happy to have you. You can also get the show on podcast starting at 11.55 p.m. tonight. And then it will replay for a full 24 hours tomorrow. This show will replay for a full 24 hours on the audio network at BBQ Central Show, the BBQ Central Show.com. All right, gang. It has happened yet again. Oh, sorry. Also on Roku, if you have Roku or some other. Internet protocol televisions, you can get it there as well. Look for Outdoor Cooking Channel in your app store, download it, and you're ready to go. All right. It has happened yet again. Another case. And I know a lot of you doubters, I want to say haters, I will say doubters. There's a lot of you out there that when I start talking about show karma, it's a gimmick. Stop talking about it. It really doesn't work. Blah, blah, blah. Well, as I just said two seconds ago, it has happened yet again. Another case of show karma has reared its head. Sterling Smith of Loot and Booty did the show this past Tuesday, recapping a Tucson's 
Sam's Club local event win that he had. He had won that one back to back in 14 15, then won it again in 2017. At the end of the interview, Sterling mentions that he was heading to Reno, Nevada to do the Sam's Club local there. Right? So, what do you think happened? What always happens when a team shows up on a Tuesday night to do the show and then they go compete that following weekend? What do you think happened? Hmm. Grand Championship. Sterling keeps the streak going. That away, Sterling. Way to lay it down. For those keeping score, that's two wins in as many weeks for loot and booty. It's fabulous. Just fabulous. Unbelievable. Evidently, there is an issue. Uh, you can also go to twitch.tv. That might help. Uh, let me put it up there. Twitch.tv slash BBQ Central Show. That may or may not work. Oop. Sheep. We got the WWW. That came on hot. Well, that didn't work either. Whatever. Hey, let me talk to you quickly, folks, about the longest-running sponsor of the show, the Barbecue Guru, located in Warminster, Pennsylvania. If you've been thinking about getting an automatic pit temperature control device, you can stop here. This is the ones you want to buy from. The company that started it all, they created this technology. Why are you going to buy from anybody else? I don't know. If you're not familiar with how these little beauties work, I'm not going to get into the minute detail, but imagine a product that allows you to set your pit temperature and once set, keeps it running at that temperature all the way through the cook. Sound too good to be true? It's not. It's real life. You can take advantage of this technology today because maybe you're a busy working professional or perhaps you're constantly on the run with kids doing errands. And quite frankly, you just don't have the time to set around and tend to pit temperatures. I get it. The Guru allows you to throw on a pork butt or a brisket or a couple slabs of ribs, and then you're off to do whatever it is you need to get done. And the Guru maintains that pit temperature you've set it at. You have a CyberQ Wi-Fi model that I know is very popular amongst backyarders as well as folks on the competition scene. Highest level of tech. You can hook up your phones, tablets, netbooks, laptop computers. Basically, once you get it set up, you never have to leave the house or your bed or your camper to see where your pit temp is at or to see where your internal temperature of meat is. If you're cooking too slow, you can ramp the pit up. If you're cooking too fast, you can ramp the pit down, all from the comfort of your smart device or connected device. You can hook it up to a local area network. It also generates its own Wi-Fi signal for capture. How about that? On the other end of that spectrum, you have the Party Q. It's about 120 bucks for most cookers. Party Q, easiest point of entry into the pit temperature control device realm. It's self-contained. It runs on AA batteries. It can go from cooker to cooker to cooker. It's absolutely fabulous. And why not pair that up with the brand new? We thought it was the new Onyx oven. Nay, it is the shotgun cooker. Love that name. Go to barbecueguru.com right now and check out all of the new spots on the shotgun cooker. You're going to love it. While you're over there, if you have any questions about what to order, call them 800-288-GURU. They will make sure you're outfitted with exactly what you need to get you up and running right out of the box. That's 800-288-GURU. Or visit thebbqguru.com. The Barbecue Guru continues to be a breakthrough in barbecue technology. We're back with Max Good from Amazing Ribs right after this. Broadcasting live from the Barbecue Central Radio Network Studios in Cleveland, Ohio. You're listening to the Barbecue Central Radio Show. Once again, here's your host, Greg Rempe. 
Hey, you love to barbecue, you love to compete, and you love to win. Do all three with help from Smithfield. Since 1938, Smithfield has been producing high-quality fresh pork products, and they now invite you to get smoking with Smithfield. Are you an organizer of a nonprofit, community, or sanctioned barbecue event? Apply for the new grant program that helps support competitions across the U.S. with resources and prize money, but that's not all. If you're a competitive barbecuer, you can join the Committed Cooks program. Members who commit to cooking with premium hand-trimmed trimmed. Smithfield Fresh Pork will receive swag and other great prizes. Commit to cooking with Smithfield and see what's going on in barbecue when you visit smokinwithsmithfield.com. That's smokinwithsmithfield.com. All right, as I mentioned in the show open, the fourth Tuesday of the month brings the visit from the resident keeper of the flame at amazingribs.com. What grills to buy? I don't know. What smokers should you be looking at potentially purchasing this coming season? I don't know. What's new and getting ready to hit the market? Well, I do know because I saw it hitting the market a couple weeks ago. So did this guy. Industry rumors, scuttlebutt, all will be revealed here in this segment. Let's welcome back Max Good to the show. Max, how are you, buddy? Doing all right. What's good. happening, Greg? Not much, man. Uh, living the good life here in Cleveland. It seems like the weather may have finally made a turn, at least, you know, for the 50s. I'll take the 50s. Once it gets really <laughs> cold, the 50s seem really warm. Uh, but we're other in the than same that, climate. Yeah, we're, uh, we're doing very well. So uh, I guess before we get into some of the more uh, industry-style talk, that being of HPB Expo recounts, <laughs> And then also a couple of the grills that we were going to be talking about tonight. The week before that, there was Meathead in Paradise. Uh, two weeks ago, I had Meathead on. And we talked a little bit, you know, kind of a high-level type of a thing. But uh, you were there in the midst of it all. And you have kind of a different perspective than Meathead did because he was out there giving a lot of the classes, doing a lot of the, the cooking and the hands-on stuff. Uh, so what was your role first and foremost? And what did you think overall of this first meetup event? Well, I was kind of uh, just an attendee in many ways. I didn't get involved that much with the planning. Uh, Brad Baird from Grill Grates and Meathead really did the bulk of that. And as you know, Brad has a home down there and he's been going there for many, many years. So he knew the lay of the land. It's a tiny, tiny island, Greg. Only 500 people live on it. 500? Uh, yeah. Wow. 500 yeah. people live on my street. <laughs> True. Yeah. Um, and, and everybody knew everything that was going on. If if I sneezed uh, and I went, walked to a restaurant, somebody would go, I heard you just sneezed. You know, it was inter an interesting environment. Um, Mead had lamented that he wished he had done more demonstrations and more education. But I uh, assured him, I don't think people were too upset. It was gorgeous. It was a blast. Brad and his wife, Susan, had plotted everything out beautifully, and we just had fun from morning to noon tonight, and it was quite an experience. Uh, let me ask you something, and I'm glad you mentioned that. You said Meathead had lamented that he wished there had been more education and more hands-on experience. Is that kind of how it was pitched originally, or was it you were just going to kind of game plan well, some to, things? Not to say there was none. Well, no, correct, um, but did, it didn't meet, I guess, what his expectation was. So was there talk about how much of that was going to take place versus just kind of relaxing and enjoying the island? No, I, th I think from the outset we had an itinerary set up that and a lot of it was free time, you know, uh, uh, eating, drinking, <laughs> getting in a boat and going from one little island to another. Um, and, and I should uh, – Hasten to add, I think you know Meathead well enough that he's always thinking ahead. And the next one that we plan is, I think, I, I think I'm think i confident to say it'll be in the United States because we want it to be more accessible for more people. Yeah. Uh, and for that one, I think he's he's thinking we need to get some more classes or, you know, something a little more structured. Um, but as I assured him, I think everyone was glad they came. Uh, I didn't see any sad faces. I didn't see anyone moaning and groaning. Uh, it was really a good time. Yeah, it sounds like it would be hard to, to moan and groan out there unless there was, yeah, you know, something was. else going on, if you know what I mean. All right, so uh, <laughs> let me fire up some of the pictures here. 
Huh. And, uh, you know, this looks like obviously a night. I mean, Meathead looks like he might have been partaking in some hippie lettuce before this picture was taken. I mean, it's a, it's a fabulous picture. He always picture. looks like that. It's his beard. Yeah, it's a great picture. Uh, obviously, you're doing like the, the rocket chimney grillers here. Yeah, the afterburner method where you'd uh, put a grate over a chimney, um, a hot chimney, as you see, and really sear the you know what out of thin steaks. It's it's for thin steaks. You you wouldn't want to. Well, I guess you could slow cook something and do reverse sear and finish them off on on that. But um, it's a lot of fun to do, like fajitas and stuff, thin steaks, because as you can see, it's crazy hot. Yeah, uh, and then you can catch. Uh, it appears you can catch your own dinner here. <laughs> That's uh, our assistant editor Sarah Lynn who uh, found a, a lobster, and you might notice what's missing from that lobster, Greg. Uh, his head, claws? That's right. Huh? Down there, um, they they don't... Actually, this is pretty common. I didn't, I didn't uh, realize that. What do they call them? Spiny lobsters, something like that. Um, they're all over the place. Hmm. I was told that when you order a lobster tail, usually you're going to get it from one of these lobsters. Because uh, they save the main lobsters and that type of lobster oh. that has the big claws for people who order whole lobsters. Yeah. But that one, just uh, I, Sarah Lynn, I hope I don't upset her to reveal that she actually didn't capture that one. Oh. We, I think we found that it, uh, spear fishers go down and they just shoot them and, and grab them up and gobble them down. And that one must have got away and... Uh, uh, ended up not surviving though, and washed up on shore. I believe we found a little bitty spear in it. So do you eat but, it or so, no? Mm -hmm. You eat that? No, no, no. Oh, okay. I I don't think it was. Uh, I think it had been gone for a little bit, but uh, 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 not so much that uh, that it that it was uh, beyond picking up and taking pictures of, if you will. Got it. All right, uh, and then here's something that I thought was very interesting: uh, corrosion living on the beach. Well, yes, that's at Brad's place, yeah. and he pointed this out to me. Um, no surprises there. You know, this is why uh, many folks, particularly those that uh, can afford it, uh, purchase e uh, grilling equipment with marine-grade stainless steel. Mm. This is, you know, a standard Weber uh, uh, kettle. I don't believe Weber offers that as an option. Um, uh, so one who lives in a, a saltwater climate... Uh, will experience something like this. What's the deal with the the tread plate discs on the top? Somebody oh, make uh, uh, some bad uh, yeah, drilling? That, I can explain that. Yeah. Uh, that's where the original mounting holes for the Weber plas gray plastic handle had been. Uh -huh. uh, and uh, they rotted through. Oh. So Brad closed off the old holes because they were just big gaping holes and drilled uh, some small holes huh. uh, and, and remounted the thing. Handy. Yes. Yeah. He's a clever fellow. All right. Uh, and uh, what other pictures would you like to take a quick look at here before we but, turn Whatever caught your eye, Greg. I, oh, I don't want to – I know you already went. Well, there he is with his wife, Lou. And, and uh, the famous business Emily's. cards. Is this his business cards all, uh, all adorned behind him? Yes, they are. Mm. But uh, this um, – this place is known for their uh, uh, official drink of the Bahamas, the Goombe Smash. Mm. Uh, there was a, a contest, I guess, many years ago. And Emily, the proprietor of Emily's, who's now uh, gone gone to a better life beyond this one, Craig. Uh, <laughs> but her daughter is still taking care of the place. Yeah. She keeps it going. And the top secret uh, Kentucky Fried Chicken type recipe is still under wraps there. And I must say, really? they are very good. Uh, you can taste the difference because everywhere you go, somebody's handing you a delicious, sweet, uh, citrusy rum drink. And, yeah. and these were certainly some of the best. And that's Meathead and his wife, Lou. Uh, and we're having a good time with some of the people that came to the event. Okay. Now, Clint is swimming with the Stingrays. This is interesting. Um, we went to an island which I, I loosely identify as Burger Island because Brad set up uh, these giant low-cost gas grills that he got from Walmart and put grill grates across them. And we grilled up some fantastic hamburgers. Uh, but one of the allures to this island is that uh, the stingrays and even some small, like, four-foot-long sharks Ooh. are tame. 
they are used to tourists coming up and feeding them. Um, we had brought in some small fish that were chopped up into like one inch pieces and people were, you know, just I, the, that stingray would glide right up to you and nibble it out of your hand. It was a very strange sensation. Now, one woman, I, I guess, was instructed uh, not to hold the, the bait in her hand yeah. to the sharks and disregarded that and got nipped a little bit there. Everyone was saying she was very lucky because their teeth are razor sharp and their jaws are incredibly strong. But the shark was very tame and did not did not want to hurt her. Oh my! Just wanted to get a little goodie there, and uh, and once again, once we got back to the shore, within hours, everyone on the island had heard about it. Oh yeah, well you know when there's only 500 people on the <laughs> island, you know what do you expect? Uh, I was looking for one other picture. Hold on, what's the deal here? Hogs on the beach? Pig Island? Really? They're a little mysterious about this. Uh, one of the other larger islands in the Bahamas, uh, somehow they got a bunch of pigs on it. And when I say large, I'm talking about you can walk across these islands in a yeah. matter of minutes. Uh, and people just take their boats and go from one to another and party and have a good time and hang out. Uh, it's like if, if we were uh, doing a pub crawl almost, you know, you only got to bring everything with you. Uh, but there was a, an island that turned into a tourist attraction a little south of us. Uh, they had a bunch of pigs on the island and people, tourists, loved to go there and visit them. Now, somebody cruelly left a bunch of pigs on this tiny, tiny island with no fresh water, none of their natural food that they like to eat. And uh, it was distressing. Uh, pigs, I guess, don't normally swim, but they learned to swim out to boats when people would happen by just desperate for food. And an Australian guy befriended them and ultimately set up a big water tank with a trough on it. And he goes there a couple times a week. He goes around to the restaurants and collects scraps for them and he brings them um, dry food and stuff. And and now it indeed has turned into a tourist attraction there. Uh, Max Good is talking with us here on the show. AmazingRibs.com is the website that he Helps right for. He's the keeper of the flame. Uh, everybody loves his job and wishes they were him. Uh, are you going to <laughs> NBBQA this weekend, Max? No, I'm not. Meathead's already there. All right. Um, as a matter of fact, uh, a bunch of people are emailing me and calling me. Uh, David Mixon, Myron's son, just contacted me today. Are you going to be there? You know, nope, nope. He likes me because I told him he's better looking than his dad. Not hard to do, but, by the way. Well, I didn't want to say anything, but. Of course, when you got mugs like ours. Right. I mean, every, break, yeah. everybody can't look as good as us. That's true. I um, try. So talk to me about, you know, high level, what you thought of this year's HPB Expo. Have you been? You've been to years past, I would assume. Um, yes, I, I yeah. go every year. So what do you think about uh, this one compared to some of the other ones? Uh, my perception was it was a little bit lighter attended, not terribly so. Um you know, I kind of keep up with most of this stuff anyway, so there are very few surprises. You and I, I saw you there briefly. We didn't get a chance to hang out as much as I would have liked to. Um, some of the things that stuck out in my mind, I think I've already shared with you, oddly enough, and I haven't tested it yet, is that ice cube yeah. grill grade brush that I mentioned to you. Uh, it uh, It's <laughs> insanely expensive at this point in time, but we'll see what happens with it. And, I'll, of course, I do need to test it, but on... Uh, just re taking a look at it, it makes a lot of sense. Um, it's odd that it's, if anybody has ever done this, many uh, particularly high-end grill manufacturers recommend you dip your grate brush in warm water and then hit the grates with it while the grates are still warm. And I can tell you, it really works good. Yeah, steam guess effect, what? Right? steam clean. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah, it's, not, it's, it's become something like that. But I'm much too lazy to do it, Greg. I just, just <laughs> scrape it away. And and so when I saw this, I said, that seems like a clever idea. The guy just has um right above the the bristles. I can't get used yep. to this right and left here. Yep. Uh, he has a little compartment where you can put ice cubes, and you can even throw a couple lemon slices in there to sweeten up the aroma. And the ice melts down on the grates as you're scrubbing them. And um, it's it made a lot of sense. I'm eager to try it out. But right now I'm embroiled in writing my top tens, Greg, and it's oh. top tens from the top to bottom from morning to night. That's all I do. Wow. Um, all right. So there were a couple grill. 
Let me tell you, I, this was the first HPB Expo that I went to, and I was taken back a little bit by how much hearth and patio there were versus bar. I mean, a lot of barbecue stuff for sure, but man, the biggest exhibitors in that place uh, had no grills in them. They were outdoor fireplace people, indoor fireplace mm -hmm. people, um, a lot of artsy avant-garde kind of things, especially when I was at the Vesta Awards, kind of covering that and seeing who was winning. Uh, not a lot of, uh, well, I guess what I would refer to as barbecue-related stuff, but I guess that's typical for that kind of a show. Yeah, Hearth, Patio, and Barbecue yeah. Association. Uh, you might have noticed there's um, also, not not so many of these guys exhibit, but there are a lot of retailers attend, you know, people that uh, have brick-and-mortar stores uh, for obvious reasons. They're, and they oftentimes don't just carry barbecue equipment. They'll carry spy equipment and furniture and the whole bit. Um, but yes, that is true. However, it has that particular show has more barbecue equipment than any show that I'm aware of in the United States. Now, uh, there's a big one in Cologne, Germany that people keep telling me I should go to called Spoga. And they actually have a business development rep here in the Chicago area that I'm starting to chat with. Um, but that that is also a a uh, combination of furniture and patio and everything, but uh, I'm told that it's that it, it HPB Expo is dwarfed by Spoga. Oh, wow. It's it's uh, allegedly and from everything I've seen, quite a bit larger. All right, uh, so we're gonna run out of time to get through both of oh. these grills, but uh, let's go ahead and talk about the Saber 500 Cast Black Grill, and uh, we'll take that to the segment end. And I do okay, have pictures. Well. I do have pictures. Okay. Well, I, I know it's going to be one of your... Oh, there you go. Yeah. <laughs> That's Hold not on. exactly the same. There we go. I know this would be one of your favorites, uh, Greg, because the parent company of Sabre is Charbroil. Yeah, great. And they employ Charbroil's... Uh, something like Charbroil's true infrared systems that they sell in their lower-priced uh, grills that appear in Lowe's. Uh, it's, it's a much higher quality... I know you'd approve of that. Also, it does cost more. This one's about uh, almost a thousand bucks. Oh wow! Um, uh, th they have um, they they don't like to call it an infrared system. They call it the the saber cooking system. Mm -hmm. But it's very unique. They have low low out. There you go. Low output burners, just like charbroil. But you see that uh, that uh, <laughs> deal above it is. Um, a conglomerate of an emitter plate that the the zigzagged uh, pieces at the bottom. That's a it's a cutaway cross section, yep. and then that more elaborate system on top that's like uh, upside down U shaped grates that sits on top of that uh, zigzag emitter plate. Just in many ways, like the charbroil true infrared systems work, uh, the heat energy is is stored. The heat energy from the burners is stored on the emitter plate mm -hmm. and transmitted up into the grates. Uh, there's very little open flame, no flare-ups, very little convection heat that would dry foods out. It's really hard to burn something on this unless you just <laughs> fall asleep, you know. Uh, it's very hard to dry out foods. Uh, a downside is between those high grates, uh, Gunk can collect, and they do oh. make tools where you can scrape it out. But unlike, say, well, pretty much any other grade system that doesn't have a solid metal plate underneath where uh, that will allow uh, drippings to drip past the grates and burn up on either heat tents or charcoal, this one can collect gunk. But yep. it's a very forgiving, effective system, and Sabre makes really high-quality uh, stainless steel equipment here. That's their uh, one of their control knobs. You see above it in this particular model, there's a thermometer above each burner. Oh. Now, I didn't test this one. This is new, a new model, but I did test uh, when they first rolled out a few years ago, a system that had these uh, thermometers above each burner. They're bimetal thermometers. They, The ones I tested were, were off quite a bit. We still oh. recommend you get good, accurate digital thermometers. But I guess on the upside, it gives you, well, like any bimetal thermometer, it gives you some kind of sense of around where you're at with the heat. But but I wouldn't trust them unless they 
as they, of course, told me, made significant improvements on it. Um, I'm skeptical of that. All right. Uh, we will get to the Napoleon Rogue next mm-hmm. time. Uh, and oh, what other okay. really good grills you are ready to talk about? Top 10 should be done by then, too, right? Yes, yes. I, I We're planning on having them out next week. So All right. Keep your eyes on AmazingRibs.com. All right, and then uh, we'll go over that in April. Uh, It's Max Good, AmazingRibs.com, Keeper of the Flame, AmazingRibs.com, the website. Always appreciate the time, Max. Thanks so much. My pleasure, Greg. You got it. There he is. It's Max. Who doesn't love Max? Everybody loves Max. That's the wrong damn screen right there. How about that? Hey, no Desmond still. How about that? Oh, no. We suck again. All guests on the Barbecue Central Show appear via the Smithfield Hotline. Yummy. All right. Uh, so thank you to Max from AmazingRibs.com. And we are off and running. That was the Sabre 500. I'm wondering, I meant to ask him if Sabre is like the infinity of Nissan. You know what I'm saying? All right. Let me talk to you quickly about the Pit Barrel Cooker. If you've been thinking about pulling the trigger on a new cooker, it can be nerve-wracking sometimes. Temperature control, fire management, what woods to buy, who needs the hassle? But I strongly suggest a pit barrel cooker. Pit barrel cooker makes cooking simple and fun, and it just might be the most unique, versatile, and easy-to-use cooker available on the market today. Imagine a single cooker that would be able to turn out great traditional barbecue meats like briskets, pork shoulders, and ribs, while also being able to ramp up in temperature to do those burgers, chicken wings, and hot dogs. Versatility, all thanks to the revolutionary design that goes beyond traditional convection. Their hook and hang method places the food in the center of the heat, so it's acting like a stationary rotisserie. The result is great tasting, perfectly cooked meat each and every time in the industry. That is called consistency. Not only is the pit barrel a fabulous cooking vessel, it's aesthetically sexy as well. Not only built to withstand heat, but thanks to its porcelain enamel finish, the pit barrel able to withstand any type of weather. Also, extremely portable, fits in the back of most trucks, vans, and SUVs, ready to go wherever you are. Of course, it's got all the accessories that you want, from the unique removable ash pan to the pit grips, the turkey hangers, the hinged grill grates, beer koozies, coffee mugs, rubs, sauces, you name it. There's a full line of accessories that will really complete your pit barrel cooking experience, and for the best part, Come on, $299. The pit barrel comes fully assembled, ready to cook on. Ships free right to your door. Not only does the cooker ship free, but with so few returns, everything they sell ships free to the lower 48 continental states each and every day. No promo code, no coupon needed. Don't take my word for it. We should ask Mac from uh, Max from AmazingRibs.com. They have given it their gold rating three years in a row. Highest rating, by the way. Head on over to pitbarrelcooker.com and see what everybody's talking about. Be sure to check out their full collection of how-to videos, and then pick up one or two for yourself. You can thank me later. If you have any questions, you can contact them through their website. Call 502-228-1222. That's 502-228-1222. And yes, they will actually talk to you. Find out what great customer service is all about. Visit pitbarrelcooker.com. That's pitbarrelcooker.com. All right, we are back with Simon Flores, Diablo's Cooker. Stick around, we'll be right back. Ready to get on the air? Call 216-220-0966. Now, let's get back to the LeBron James of Barbecue Talk, Craig Rampey. This portion of the show being brought to you by Green Mountain Grills, manufacturers of some of the best pellet cookers out there on the market today. If you're looking for a big cooker to house a lot of food, they got one for you. Something medium size, they got you covered there too. Also, tailgate style, Davy Crockett's the bomb. Also, supplying you with pellets to fire those cookers. Check them out at GreenMountainGrills.com. That's GreenMountainGrills.com. All right. My next guest, a competitive barbecue cook, seeing a lot of action in the Texas region of the country a few weeks ago. The official Texas Embedded correspondent, Doug Scheiding, was recounting a mix-up of the Houston Houston Livestock and Rodeo this year. My next guest, a part of that, we might hit on that. Let's head over to the hotline and welcome first-timer to the show, the pit master of Diablo's Cookers, Simon Flores, joining me here on the show. Simon, how are you, buddy? I'm doing great. How are you? Absolutely fabulous. Appreciate you making time for the show. And I guess, you know, before we go headlong into the barbecue talk here, Simon, 
you know, a little bit about yourself. I mean, Texas always associated with barbecue, whether it's at the restaurant, whether it's the competition level, whether it's just at your house. Growing up, are you uh, a guy that was raised in that barbecue culture, or is it something you picked up a little later in life? I think it all falls back to uh, my early years, growing up in the kitchen with my grandma and my mother. Uh, my grandma was just constantly cooking breakfast, lunch, and dinners, everything homemade, you know, just all day long. He even happened to sell, you know, to EMS, the uh, the everybody in blue, you know, police officers, fire department, everybody would come to her house and just buy food out of the house. I think I kind of fell in her footsteps after that and just decided to start barbecuing and, and trying to do the same thing and, and, and continue her legacy on. How do you happen upon or how do you find out about competition barbecue? It all started, um, I was competing just doing backyard stuff, you know, for many years. And, of course, we all know backyard barbecues don't pay the bills anymore. So, luckily, <laughs> I competed at a few different um, events, and I got I got to happen. Um, I, I beat somebody at a cook-off, and he said, I got to come and shake your hand. I got to know what you cooked. This guy is a big pit master known as Robert Smith, which is now one of my good, good buddies I do work for, and we're kind of we're on the same team with First Class Barbecue, and um, I just, you know, we just he, he got me into the competitive side of everything, and he's off, absolutely took me underneath his wing and, and going around, you know, everywhere and getting me into competitions with himself, and we've had a lot of good success. Uh, one of the things that I find endlessly fascinating is team names. Uh, your team is Diablo's Cookers. Is there anything special or hidden <laughs> or, you know, what's the agenda behind the name there? Uh, well, they, my nickname is Diablo. I learned I, I earned that name when I was a young kid. I was always in trouble, <laughs> but now you know um, it's. I, I got married, got a beautiful wife, three kids, and you know I just had to change my life around. But the name stuck. <laughs> so just Diablo by name now. Yes. Yeah. Yes, and, I, and then you know I got I put a team together of a few good hardworking mules, and I were just out constantly. You know, either catering or doing small cook-offs, doing big cook-offs. And then, of course, on my off time, I help out First Class Barbecue, which I'm also a pit master with them. And then I've been worked the, uh, the restaurant over in Hempstead, Texas. So as far as Diablo's Cookers team is concerned, is it do you have like a set other uh, or a set number of other teammates that show up each and every time? Is it kind of a, a revolving door of who's available? What's the setup there? Oh, no, the guys that I've had on my team, they've been with me pretty much since day one. There's probably about six of us, and uh, they're always at every cook-off. You know, just they they do their best, you know, right after work. They're there at every event to try to make things happen and, you know, try to make us shine, you know, and get the hardware we need. Helping hands for you, or do they really lend to the cooking process during the competition? They're really helping hands, you know. They allow me to, you know, take over and just cook everything, and I can. I don't even have to say anything to them anymore. I can just give them a nod, and they already know what to do, um, what to lay out, or what to, what knives to get me, and stuff like that. Uh, we're talking with Simon Flores from Diablo's Cookers here on the show. Uh, Simon, talk to me. You know, when I am having conversations with pitmasters, there seems to be three different styles of teams at this point and it's ranged over the course of the show but you either have the guys that are like the the single pit masters like yourself then you have like the duo and it's usually a husband and a wife or a boyfriend and girlfriend and then all of a sudden it jumps up to the teams that got like five or six dudes and they're all like five pit masters together and it seems like that at least to me I'm a I'm a control freak it goes to stand mm -hmm. here on this show, you know, nobody else is, I, I mean, I get some help from some other correspondents and stuff here, but as far as producing the show and hosting the show, I mean, it's all me because I trust nobody that w I don't think anybody's yeah. going to put in the same work that I'm going to do. Is that a similar mindset with why you stay as the pit master or would you be open to, to branching out? Oh, no, I'm, I'm open to branching out. That's why I joined First Class Barbecue. You know, there's so much more to learn to the competitive side of the sanctioned events and stuff. So, uh, Diablo's Cookers, we kind of did a lot. We do a lot more catering than competition these days. Um, so I kind of help out First Class Barbecue. Any, any, any opportunity I get, and we do catering around the world as well with them. And um, that's I, I love working with them, guys. You know, there's you know, four good pit masters on that team, and we all work together, and we all, you know, flavor profiles are on point all the time and you know just run with it you know nobody's there's no i in that team you know everybody's just you know 
everybody's self-disciplined and know what needs to happen and they get it done. There is that adage of too many cooks in the kitchen. Um, do you guys have to spell out up front what everybody's responsibility is when you're with first class cooker? Because obviously, you know, a pit master is also one of those alpha males and you get four or five of those guys together and, you know, nobody's looking to, to get chippy with one another, but it would seem to me that as long as everybody kind of knows the role and, and can help everybody out, that's going to be the successful way to run a team that's got that kind of a talent. Oh, yeah, we kind of get, we kind of like throw a toolbox meeting first thing, you know, once we get to location and we kind of, you know, iron out all the wrinkles, hey, this is what's going to go on, you're doing this, you're doing that, you're doing this, you're doing that, and then everybody's in sync and works together, and it's it's worked really well that way. No no ounce of alcohol is drank until all the turn-ins are gone in, and, I mean, just, it's it's like anything, any other team I've ever been on, you know, it's just everybody's in sync, and it, it makes things happen the right way. Have you seen kind of um I don't know if it's if it's an evolution or or a trend away, you know, 7 8 9 years ago, it was all about the party first and then if you did well the next day, hey, that was great. And it seems like there's been a trend away from that where it's all business. And yeah. uh, and maybe that has to do with the amount of expense that's invested into competitions where the amount wasn't yeah. that much five, six, seven years ago. Is that the uh, the mindset for you guys? Yes, exactly. Because, you know, like I said, when I first started off, you know, maybe 10, 12 years ago, it was, you know, all about, I mean, we wanted to have a big party, but it was always about the food. But it seemed like um, nobody was disciplined enough to just strictly stick to the food. And everybody was, co was more concentrated on the big party, you know, and if we won, we won. If we did, we didn't, but we had a hell of a party. And then it started getting really expensive, you know, and coming home with uh, with nothing, <laughs> you know. But um, you kind of learn pretty quick, you know, that hey, there's a there's there's money involved, you know, and we can win some money if we do things right. Simon Flores joining me here on the show. You know, Simon, other sanctioning bodies have certified judges. Do you think that there is a benefit to having, I guess, what you could call a people's choice style of judging that the Texas contingent is accustomed to? Do you like that? Oh yeah, sure, sure. I just, I mean, I, I'm pretty open. All I do is I show up, I want to cook and I do my best. That's all that's on my mind. You know, it's all in the judge's hands, what they think. And if they like it, they do. If they don't, they don't. As long as I know, I put, you know, my heart and soul in every, every time I touch something, you know, that's just the way my grandma taught me. If you're going to do something right, you do it right the first time. Depending on where <clears throat> you go in Texas, will you tweak flavor profiles will a, will a western texas or a northern texas have uh, a different flavor profile yeah, well, yes well we kind of what we kind of started doing is um when we roll into town say it's you know anywhere you know we roll in we'll go to the nearest barbecue joint and we'll try their barbecue and then we we'll say okay this is what we got to go back to camp and this is what we got to mimic because that's i'm sure that's what the judges are used to and i would say nine out of ten times it's it's been proven right so we do tweak tweak to the to that hmm. taste that flavor profile how many events are you looking to cook this year oh as many as possible <laughs> yeah it, it's been a, it's oh. been a fun ride it was quite a struggle to begin but um this last past year or so you know robert's taking robert smith's taking me under his wing and saying come on we got to get out there we got to get out there your name's getting out there more and more and you know i want you to shine as well so you know, i'm real real grateful for for a friend like that Simon, from a, a sanctioning body standpoint, you have IBCA in Texas, you have LSBS, there's been a couple other ones. Uh, I forget the, the one that kind of defunct last year that IBCA was able to, to take under its wing. Would you like to see a, a unifying, a single unifying barbecue sanctioning body, or is that not big of a deal to you? Yeah, it, it's not really much of a big deal to me. I just, like I said, I show up to cook and, you know, and just run with it. Let's talk about Houston Livestock and Rodeo, a handful of weeks oh, ago. Oh, wow. Right? <laughs> so Dutch Oven Mix-Up, originally you're announced the second overall, uh, but really you're the winner when it all shakes out. So yeah, when, they pulled a Steve Harvey on us. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I mean, it, it never ends. It's happening in barbecue competitions now. So when did you notice or feel like something might have been awry? Well, we, we got home – on uh, that Sunday evening, and we kind of got online, and we're just looking at some stuff. Then we noticed on Monday that um, the Houston Press was releasing that the Sopapilla cheesecake, which was our dessert, 
um, had won first place, but they had named another team. So I was like, okay, maybe it was just a typo and uh, let it fly. Well, then um, I think it was Houston Livestock Show and Rodeo posted the winners, and it was first place dessert was a smoked sopapilla cheesecake. <laughs> and I was like, that's our dessert. You know, we why are they saying our dessert was first place, but they gave a second place? So it kind of – Robert, you know, made a made a phone call and uh, to the Houston Livestock Show and Rodeo and had them, you know, to investigate in a little bit. So they went back and audited everything, and sure enough, it came back, you know, a few hours later that it was in fact our dessert that won first place. That there was a mix up in in all the counts and stuff. So I mean, it's great to win, right? I mean, you're seeing it in print. Uh, it, it seems a little weird that your name isn't out there, but the dessert that you made is the one that is being named as the winner. Are you pissed a little bit that you weren't able to be on the stage and, and have that overall grand championship with your name called out and kind of soak in that whole situation? I mean, you kind of cheated out of that, right? Uh, not really because, like I said, I'm grateful to, to make top three. You know, and they, I mean, I was on stage, you know, and they, they, they gave, you know, first-class barbecue, you know, first runner-up, you know, so we did get, you know, our names called and, you know, everybody in the crowd was screaming and, you know, it felt pretty good. And there was hundreds and hundreds of folks, you know, chanting, oh, you yeah. know, um, you know, you know, cheering us on, you know, for winning. But, you know, when we got back to camp, you know, we we're kind of like, man, you know, yeah, we wish we would have got first place, but we'll take <laughs> it. You know, we, you know, a couple of years ago, back to back grand champions and ribs and runner up and ribs. And so the last few years have been really good for first class barbecue at Houston Livestock Show and Rodeo. You're a better man than me. I would have been pissed. No doubt about it. <laughs> so now let me ask you this as a follow-up. How much bigger of a deal do you think would have been made out of this if this would have happened in the barbecue portion versus the Dutch oven portion? Oh, wow. Yeah, I think I think a lot more people are going to start contesting everything now. <laughs> you know, how can they how can they ruin something, you know, so badly? Do you, do you uh, think people were wondering what the deal? Because I think yes, um, yes, you, yes. you, you, you yeah, have. We sat, around the, we sat around the fire and, and we were like, discussing you know i wonder how many times have this happened you know or how many other people are going to think that this has happened to them and how many more people are going to start contesting every every cook well you look at the guy who won overall darren worth from iowa smoky d's and he wins oh, with yeah. uh i think it was ribs and yes he finished like you know I, it was some ridiculous place in chicken so without knowing what had happened with the dutch oven but as soon as i heard about that I was talking with Doug Shiding. I was like, man, did they screw up chicken? Did, did Darren Worth really score a 378th in chicken or something like that? So there's got to be <laughs> second guessing like all over the place as soon as that thing's uh, yeah. run out. Wow, that's going to yeah, be Yeah, everybody was. Uh, where are you cooking at next? We are cooking. Uh, we're going to do some. I'm doing something with Traeger um, this weekend up in Fort Worth at the nice. National Barbecue uh, Association. It'll be, it'll be a fun dig, a uh, little deal going on up there with all the famous pit masters and, you, and then right shortly after that i'll be heading to memphis and made a cook with brad from the shed nice all right everybody loves hanging out with brad and he's a good time no doubt oh yeah about oh man we've cooked we've cooked with brad a few times and he's really a good friend you know he calls me on occasion hey what you got going on you know hey i need you to come to memphis i want you to cook chicken you know i believe your chicken diablo can do it and you know and i was like okay well we'll talk about it this weekend when we see each other and we'll make it happen <clears throat> All right, so Simon Flores is who we're talking to here on the show. He is the pitmaster of Diablo's Cookers. He's going to be in Fort Worth for the MBBQA and then Memphis in May after that. Simon, really appreciate the time tonight, man. Thanks so much for coming on. No problem. Thank you. There he is. Simon. Awesome. Great first-time entrance. Good energy. Likes to talk about what's happening. All guests on the Barbecue Central right? Show appear via the Smithfield Hotline. Yummy. Love first-timers to just come in and let it rip. That's what I'm talking about. Way to go, Simon. Appreciate you. I don't want to pull back the curtain too much, but that was kind of, you know, he, he was literally out of the bullpen. Hours, hours ago, I was scrambling to fill. Simon steps up, hits a home run. He'll be back on. I always find it fascinating that, you know, top pitmasters will cook with other top pitmasters. I want to beat everybody. 
All right, folks, uh, if you are like me, you're thinking of ways to step up the barbecue and grilling game, and now you can do it even easier with Butcher's Barbecue. Oh, oh I, I can't mix the powder. Ah, the, the easy measuring thing with the shaker in it, it's too hard. What can I possibly do? I know what you can do. You can head on over to ButcherBBQ.com and get the pork and beef injection already made in the bottles. Here we go. Here we go. Stick your injector needle in the bottle. Pull out what you want. Inject it into said protein. Even the stupid people can do it. I can do it. Now, if you're not in the market for injections... Maybe you're already stocked up. You're like, well, what else does Dave got? Well, let me tell you. He's got great rubs. The staple rubs. The uh, steak and brisket. You have the honey rub, which I absolutely adore. You have the newer rubs that were released. Pecan, cherry, chipotle, Dave's private master triple secret blend seasoning. Also the sauce, right? The sweet barbecue sauce is absolutely fabulous. It's great all by itself. It's great great all you can use it as a base you can doctor it up come on i remember the first time that i had dave's sauce i was drinking it out of the bottle i believe i was doing an interview with meathead goldwood but he stopped me halfway through the interview and he's like are you drinking that barbecue sauce out of the bottle and i'm like yes it is that good i am drinking it out of the bottle liquid injection baby that's right liquid 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 come on here we go All right. David, is it a one-use bottle then? You can, you can probably put that in the refrigerator, right, Dave? If you don't use it all, put it in your ice chest. Come on. Why are you going to use it all? Get enough meat, use it all. Also, the grilling oils. Oh, I love the grilling oils. Butter flavor. Chipotle steakhouse. Here's what you do. Head on over to ButcherBBQ.com. That's ButcherBBQ.com. Yeah. All right, we are back to wrap up the first hour right after this. Stick around. We'll be right back. Big name interviews, advice on cooking brisket and ribs, and the only host willing to share his honest opinion on all things important in the world of barbecue, it's the Barbecue Central Show. This portion of the show being brought to you by CookinPellets.com, your number one source for quality wood pellets for all your pellet driven cookers visit cookapellets.com for more information or to purchase you can also visit amazon.com to purchase as well did we get fixed over at outdoor cooking channel everybody okay where are you watching at where are you listening at special thanks to chris becker for hipping me to twitch as well didn't know about that didn't know about the twitch now i know about the twitch we're on there as well all right, thanks again to Simon Flores from Diablo's Cookers for joining me this past segment. You know, it re you I don't want to broad stroke it too much, but it really seems that some of the top pitmasters have had some type of a culinary background. Uh, not necessarily professionally trained like the International Culinary Professional Gangster Institute, somewhere along these lines, the culinary professionals. But as Simon said, his grandma was in the house cooking breakfast, lunch, and dinner, selling to EMS, fire departments. Is that illegal? I don't think the health department would like that. But he's now inspired to continue on with the food. Now look at him. Pitmaster of Diablos, doing a big cater thing. I had a whole bunch of catering questions that I didn't get to. Don't want to do that again next time we have him on. I think there's a large contingent of listeners maybe not uh, the the true hardcore centralites that tune in live every tuesday but people are thinking about getting into catering barbecue catering specifically he'd be a good guy to bounce questions off of especially how do you price how do you hold do you cook on site do you deliver do you do both cook on site while you're delivering to the same location 
I think we could knock a segment or two out about catering. What do you think? I think so. All right, uh, we are going to reload here for the second hour. Lots to get to yet. Big updates coming at the top. I suggest you refresh your libation. And then come back for the second hour. We'll chat it up. You know where we're broadcasting from, don't you? Cleveland. Ohio. All right. You're listening and watching the Barbecue Central show right here on the Barbecue Central Network. Stick around. I'll be right back. This is Jimmy Burns from Melbourne, Ohio, and you're listening to Barbecue Central. Happy to have you aboard here for the really big barbecue show. Boing. We cook because we have to, and we grill because we want to. Hit me. Fine, how you doing? We have a great show, I'm a big fan. Boing. So what 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 seems to be the problem here? This man looks like he's dead and he's in the in the crackle. Charbono! It's all about the Charbono, dude! Succulent fish! What? He ate two feet before we nursed. Delicious Liberty is shit feet. I'm shaking like a dog shit peach seed. <laughs> we have some men working on it right now. Stop. All right, just like that, we are into the second hour. Here we go. Congratulations, everybody. You found the Barbecue Central Show. This is the show that talks about all things important in the world of barbecue and grilling. We're broadcasting live from the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame city of Cleveland, Ohio. The barbecue capital of the North Coast. If you missed the first hour, oh, it's all right. You only missed two of the best interviews ever. Max Good recounting some meathead in paradise, seeing scantily clad chicks with lobsters like that. Simon Flores came in at 9.35 and wowed the crowd as a first-timer into the show. So yeah, how about it? You can get the first hour around 11.55 p.m. tonight and... If you didn't know how it works, if you go to the audio portion of this show, which is at thebbqcentralshow.com, and then click on the Live Now button right there. It's big and red right at the top. You can't miss it. Click that. That takes you over to TuneIn.com where the live audio stream takes place. And then you can hear this show, the show that's taping right now. It's live, but I'm taping it for podcast. It will replay all 24 hours tomorrow. So... You can jump in, get bits and pieces. Every two hours, the show plays again all the way through the day tomorrow. Also, subscribe to the show on iTunes or however you get your podcasts. Pretty much that's how most people get it. By the way, I am very excited to sit here and tell you. We are at record, record download numbers for this show as of the last handful of months. The new year turned. I'm not sure exactly what happened. I'm not sure exactly why people are turning into the show that didn't or uh, becoming big fans of the show. I'm not sure exactly what's happening, but something is going on. People are taking note. People want to get on the train of awesome that is the Barbecue Central show. So we are just, we are getting ready to break. Our all-time download number this month, and we're going to beat it by roughly, just throwing a guess out there, 4,000 downloads. That's a big number. You people would be happy if you got 400 downloads for your pathetic shows. I'm going to beat my best download number by at least 4,000. Four. K. I don't know what the hell that was. So, 
you might be aware because you see my shirt, Horse Meat 2017, that it's been a ongoing love affair with trying to get horse meat legalized here in the United States. Uh, first, we need to have the government approve anti-mortem inspection and pay those FSIS inspectors to go to what would have to be horse processing plants, which they don't do. Uh, Meathead Goldwyn had posted something on his Pitmasters Club. That's the portion you have to pay for saying that horse meat is legal for consumers, and that was dated a year ago. Not necessarily incorrect. However, when you look at it from a realistic standpoint, incredibly incorrect. So the way that it is set up right now, if you decided you wanted to get into the horse processing business, I think we could all pool our dollars and open our own horse processing plant. I can bring Dave Bosca out of retirement. He's a, a savvy, experienced vet when it comes to butchering. I'm not saying he's a horse butcher, but he's got butchering experience, so I'm sure it would take him about five seconds to figure out how to take down a horse. We'll source our horses responsibly. We'll truck them up to the horse slaughter plant. Uh, Dave is also used to dispatching animals, so maybe he can be both executioner and cutter-upper guy. Uh, Dave, if you don't want to do this or be associated with it, tune out uh, for at least the next three or four minutes. Here's the downfall. After we have our fortune collected, we have our horse processing plan up to speed, we have our dispatchers and cutters in place, our new business, which is Rempe's Horse Meat Processing, okay, is going to fall on extremely, extremely financial hard times right off the bat. Not because we're going to have kooks out front going, save our horses, you people are animals. Not because of that. It's because, as Dave would tell you, we, our new company, Rempe's Horse Meat Processing Company, in Cleveland or Oklahoma, since we're going to need Dave to actually do a lot of this stuff. So we'll move it closer to Dave to keep him satisfied. I don't want him to quit after a week. We, as our new uh, ownership group, are going to have to pay to bring these FSIS inspectors in in order to do the proper meat inspections to get that stamp in order for us to then sell out to the greater consuming public. By the way. I have it on good authority, and the, it is growing each and every week. Folks, I'm not, I am here to tell you, and I'm not kidding. People are wearing horse meat t-shirts like it's going out of style, but more importantly, people are writing papers in colleges about how horse meat should become legal. I'm not kidding. It's actually happening. There's a gentleman by the name of Evan Krim who is submitting to a college that he attends a uh, paper on horse meat and why it would be good for the economy. I'm telling you, it's sweeping the nation. However, we will be bankrupt inside of a week uh -oh. <laughs> because FSIS is very costly, very costly. And the reason that it works for every other friggin' meat is because the federal government subsidizes the FSIS to be on site to do those inspections, to give the stamps, to make sure everything's on the up and up. Why can't they do that for Rempe's horse meat processing? So while it is legal, it is completely financially irresponsible. You're committing financial suicide by buying into Rempe's horse meat processing plant located in Dave, where do you live at? Something Oklahoma. Let's call it Norman, Oklahoma. I like Norman. That's where Oklahoma University is. University of Oklahoma, right? The Sooners, Boomer, Sooner. We're going to Norman with our horse meat processing plant where Dave can drive very quickly to and from work. It's your schedule, Dave, by the way. I'm not mandating you work 40 hours, just whatever you can give. Because it's going to cost a lot of money to pay those FSIS people. So we're going to need fin way bigger financial backers than I had thought of, but Chandler, right. Rempe's Horse Meat Processing in Chandler, Oklahoma. That's got a great ring to it. 
So while our processing prospects are dim, the fact that an overwhelming number of people that I continually talk to, and it's not the same people, different people every day, seeing the shirt, seeing no names, please, nationally rated volleyball championship team wearing horse meat t-shirts and having conversations with people in North Dakota and South Dakota and Maryland and Illinois, you name it. Conversations are being had now. We're opening, we're changing minds. People are open to having a discussion. Certainly there's going to be people who think that's the grossest thing ever. I get it. We're not forcing it down your throat. We're just talking about having an option. In fact, here in a couple of, let's say, years, this is what the butcher case could look like right here. Guess what? That's horse steak. Look how good that looks. <laughs> Succulent. Can you imagine adding a little butcher's barbecue injection to that to keep it nice and succulent? Look at that. Steak. Oh, well, I don't know, but I think that's in French. I want to give a shout out to Steaming Ned. That's what his name is on the Facebook, Steaming Ned, for that picture. So I'm very excited about this. I'm very happy that America is giving us the opportunity to at least have this discussion and hasn't shut me down. But look for new construction in Chandler. Dave, uh, let's start looking at tax abatements immediately, if not sooner, because I'm going to get financial backing from top men in the industry and women. Um, also, the deadline for the American Royal Barbecue Hall of Fame forms is uh, April 14th. So if you haven't made your nomination for me under journalist, please take the time to fill that out in full so I can give a magnanimous acceptance speech later this year, which I will record and it will go down in perpetuity. You can name it. I mean, you, you can feel it, right? You know it's going to happen. All right, folks, let me talk to you quickly about the CHOPS power injector system. The NBBQA 2015 and 2016 barbecue tool of the year. Could it go three years in a row? It's coming this weekend. Can the CHOPS power injector system pull a triple peat? I don't say three peat. That's stupid. Triple peat. Two is double peat. One is a peat. There's three different sizes to choose from. The half-gallon chops power injector system designed for the competition guy or to pump up the backyard warrior like me. Easy to use, clean it, fill it, pump it, and away you go. If you have just one brisket or pork shoulder to do, don't get all crazy. You don't need to fill it all the way up. Just put in what you need. It uses it all. Comes with a whole mess of great stuff. It's 100 bucks plus shipping. Then you have the one-gallon chops power injector system. It will hold double the amount of the half-gallon, hence the name, the one-gallon. Some use it in competitions, like when you're cooking MBN whole hog or 10 shoulders to get that perfect one. This one comes with the same amount of cool stuff as the half gallon. It costs 120 bucks, plus you'll pay the shipping. Then the newest one, the Chops Full Power Injector System. It's electric and is the commercial in competition Big Daddy. This time, no holding tank, but a three and a half foot pickup tube. You can put in any size container. From a few ounces to a 55 gallon drum, Designed for Chef Rob at the best barbecue restaurant in Kansas City, which I plan to go to in like three weeks. Four weeks? He said time and time again that with the Chops Full Power Injector System, his briskets are better than ever. It comes with metal needle adapters, 14 gauge needles, 3 inch 12 gauge needles, 2 inch 11 and a half gauge needles, 3 plug screws, and a needle protector. 325 bucks plus shipping anywhere. A number of the top pitmasters in the world are using CPI every day to make their barbecue better than the rest. Why? because we live in a foodie world, yes? And it requires flavor and every bite, yes? This is how you do it, do it fast. And it's not just for meat, alcohol-infused watermelon, cantaloupe, honeydew, peaches, kiwi. The list is endless. Every injector, hand-assembled, right there in Kansas City, Missouri, USA. If you want extra accessories, you know they got them. Here's what you do, head on over to Barbecue Kansas City, that's B-A-R. B-E-Q-U-E, BarbecueKansasCity.com, and get to shopping. And if you're in Kansas City, go to Dan Uledal's barbecue restaurant, Chops Barbecue. Rave reviews on Yelp. 
Chad Ward out of the break. Stick around. We'll be right back. The only show giving you a monthly visit from a doctor of barbecue. A man actually named Meathead. 